Hey, I'm Andy Clark. I'm a lifelong cyclist and a father of two with a full-time job and a few side hustles. You may recognize me from some of my product reviews, but this series is going to be different. I'll be talking to amateur and pro cyclists alike to ask them about a time they lost contact with the pack in a big race or event and what they learned from that experience. This is That Time I Got Dropped. In this episode of That Time I Got Dropped, I went back to my hometown of Little Rock, Arkansas to sit down with Leah Thorvalson a world-class marathon runner who started riding a trainer in November 2015 to recover from a hamstring injury. While she was recovering, a friend encouraged her to enter the 2016 Zwift Academy, which is a global competition for a one-year contract with the Canyon SRAM professional cycling team. Anyone with a trainer, a bike, and a Zwift subscription can enter, and much to her surprise, less than eight months later, she won the contest and hopped on a plane to join the Canyon Women's Pro Cycling Team Camp in progress. Which is exactly as physically and emotionally challenging as it sounds. And that's where we pick up the story, right in the deep end of a freezing cold pool. I've got a whole lot of questions for you. Uh, I have been following you, I don't know, stalking you on social media. <laughs> Not really. Uh, because your story is so cool. Like, uh, you... I know you're going to tell me more about it, but in 2016, you won a little contest, <laughs> and I want you to I want you to tell me about that. But I want you to start with why in the world you ever entered that contest in the first place. So my assumption has always been with you is that you went straight from that sort of I mean let's face it, top 200 female runners in the world fitness to the bike, and that's not the case. You had a big gap in between. So I had a surgery in May of 2015. July 2nd, 2015 was my first bike ride. And I rode quite a bit until I knew there was another surgery coming. It was like this one had to heal, then they had to find a donor. And whenever they found the donor, it was gonna be like, we've got your bone. Let's go. Come out here next yep. week. Yep. And that happened in November. And then I was, I was on crutches for the rest of the year. And then I think February of 2016 is when I was able to get on a stationary bike, you know, tw started 20 minutes. And when that got up to an hour, I was just like, this isn't, this is, I'm going to lose my mind. Like, I can't yeah. just stare at the wall in my garage. And yeah. somebody said, well, you need to try Zwift, which I had never heard of Zwift. I was just, this is in 2016? 2016. This is like right after your surgery? Yeah. Okay, you're, so you're rehabbing. Yeah. Literally rehab, and you discover Zwift. And you'd only been a cyclist for months, not years at this point. It was... I mean, literally months. Less because than Because I rode from July to November, and then I'd been on crutches. Okay. So I had a few months in 2015, never done a bike race. So I'm Zwifting, and then, you know, these things start popping up. Registration open now, you know, a few months later. And I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, this is that thing that Missy was talking Cool. I'm going to... And, and, why not? Yeah, why not? What the heck? I felt... Honestly, what my feelings were, it f I felt like I was on an episode of The Bachelor. Because literally, we went yeah. one by one. And I remember then walking. Then we had to all three go back after we'd each had our one by ones and we weren't supposed to talk. And then the three of us had to go back into the room with him and the team, like PR communicator, director sportif, right. and Kate from Zwift, and then the, the, the person filming it all. And I remember walking back down the hallway to go back to this hotel room and feeling like I could hear this, the music. There was no music, but I was like, I feel like I'm watching, like out of body experience, like I'm watching someone on The Bachelor when they're going to find out if they got the final rose. Oh and there should goodness. be, it was just wild. Yeah. And yeah, and then we but went. you got the final rose. I got the final rose. I actually was given some flowers. So there was like no training camp. There was no. No. Let's just kind of throw you into the deep end of yeah. the pool. Yeah. So what was your the first deep The deep end of the race? pool, February. So I flew overnight flight to Belgium. Yeah. I think I arrived, I don't, I don't know, late afternoon, evening, and I raced the next morning. Yikes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess. And now, you want to talk about ugly cry. I remember yeah. that night, like I got there and like on top of like, I've never been so nervous for something in my life. I'm yeah. in a foreign country traveling here with hauling all the bikes and everything by yourself navigating was not a picnic right and i was roomed with hannah barnes who she was very sweet but i just i don't know her that well i don't know any of them that well right and i was like down on the floor like 
snot dripping from my face crying just like trying not to make a sound because i'm like oh i don't goodness. want her to wake up hearing me like sobbing oh and i don't want to wake her up period but right. i was just like i can't how am i gonna do how this gonna happen how am i gonna do this right there were three <laughs> stories you sent me there was one where you <laughs> ended up pondering your life floating in the ocean mm -hmm. i want to hear that story will you tell that one to me the giro rosa is a different beast. The Giro Rosa is the closest thing currently that the women have to a Tour de France or a Giro d'Italia. Right. You don't have much riffraff yeah. in the Giro Rosa. Like only the teams that are invited are all pretty good. Um, I mean, are mostly all really good, but you will get a few of like the local Italian, maybe local is the wrong word, but smaller teams. Right. But for the most part, everybody there knows how to ride a bike really well. Um, Except, you know, you. Except me, and there were a few others. But the thing with the Giro Rosa, like uh, most races in a stage race, you'll get a, a cutoff percentage that's somewhere between five and fifteen percent. Okay. Time cut. Right. The Giro is real forgiving. Like if you want to keep going out there and just like getting your ass beat day after day after day, It'll you probably you. can because the cutoff is like. I don't know. I know what it amounted to. You could be like 40 minutes behind the right. winner and still be allowed to start the next day. How many stages is it? 10. 10. That's legit. 10. So, oh man. I, and the, the other thing with it was some of the stages are pretty long and it's very hot. And so the longer ones, I'd find myself actually fairly comfortable early on, but I learned really quickly that that was going to be a problem because if it's going pretty chill for the first 50 kilometers when it gets turned on it's going to go and it's going to go hard and yeah. you better you better be ready yeah. it got to a point where you know the the team directors were saying if if you've been dropped like do what you can try to stay in learn something every stage if you get dropped we are going to roll up alongside you and we're going to tell you what pace you need to maintain to make the time cut. Like there's, because I was coming in, you know, I'd be 11 minutes back or I'd come in 20 minutes back and I could come in 40 minutes back and still start. So they were just like, if you're dropped, we want you to, to ride in, basically come in as, as, as late as you can, save yeah. yourself for the next day because maybe the next day Something will, will be the day that you have this yeah. epiphany, you know, when you're able to. So were you just in no man's no woman's land by yourself there was there was there was, there was a few other stragglers and each day there was a few less because one of them would actually fall out of the time cut or right. would choose to not they didn't they they were they'd had enough yeah um so not solo but but this so so we came to this understanding you know that we're going to tell you if you're dropped we're going to tell you what pace you need to go and then you just ride that and finish the stage yeah so we get to stage six and this was a circ a four four laps of like a I don't know, 30K circuit maybe. Yeah. And started, the, the start finish was on the coast, like along, there was a beach. So there's, you know, it was a big, I mean, the, all of these have a lot of fans, but teams had these tents set up and cooking and like uh, all kind, all the things. Yeah. And I was dropped, I was dropped after one lap. Oh, wow. And so during lap two, here comes my team car. And as planned, I mean, I was, I was still within sight. I wasn't like, but I was, I, I wasn't getting back on. Yeah. Well, my team car comes up and they said 30 K an hour. That's, that's and what you fine. need to do. So I finished lap two and the guy came out in the road. You're done oh. because it was laps and they oh, hadn't taken it into no. account. I guess they were concerned that over the next two laps I would get caught. Right. And they could pull you if I had finished three laps and they'd pulled me, I'd be allowed to start the next day. Yeah. But because of the advice, and I'm not, I'm not, the whole problem with the thing was I wasn't good enough to be there. But we had this agreed upon plan from the DS. And so, so I'm not gonna blame them for what they thought was a smart call. Right. But that call that we made ended up resulting in my Giro Rosa ending. And it was and hard. What stage was it again? This was six. Stage so there was six. four to go still. And how many races how, uh, was this for you at this point? How many oh, races gosh. Total? Well, it was, this is June. So we were half okay. in the season. Halfway. So I probably had okay. 20. 
but it was by far the most challenge. It was it was gonna be the, it was my first stage race. It was my first world tour, which is the top level. Yeah. And it was the Giro Rosa. Right. The whole the, I could I could I could fill a whole another hour telling you stories of yeah. the various things that happened at the Giro Rosa. But when I just kind of I was like I was I was devastated. Like yeah. it wasn't ending the way I wanted. Like as much as I knew I wasn't contributing to the team with what I'd been able to do that far, I still wanted to see it through. I still wanted to be able to say, like, I finished the Giro, yeah. you know? I don't care if I'm the Lantern Rouge, I finished. Right. So, um, one of the other teams, Ale Cipollini, and they're, they're an Italian team. We had a couple Italian riders, so they knew, I didn't know them at all, but I felt like it was kind of, they were kind of friendly, yeah. and we were just a really well-known team. So I pulled off and a couple of them came out to me, oh, you know, are, are, everything is okay, are you okay? And I'm just, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm okay, but I'm, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. And they were just like, do you want some food? And I was just like, you know, would you, would you watch my bike? Because I need to, I need to go get in the ocean. Like I, yeah. I, I, I just need, I don't know if you've ever seen that yoga where they say like, let all the bullshit melt away. I'm like, yeah. I need to go and, and they're like, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. So they held my bike and I ran through that sand and it was burning my feet. It was like white hot so sand, but I floated out and just kind of, it was a very, I was, I cried. I yeah. was, but it was like, it was, a. I was like, wow, I'm in Italy. Yeah. I'm in the ocean. I'm a, I'm a professional cyclist. Like life is pretty great right now even though this moment sucks like it's so nerve-wracking being at those races and being in those moments and like trying not to let everything get to you and trying to absorb all of the great things like yeah. now when I look back I've got some serious rose-colored glasses like I don't yeah. remember I do remember but I don't the first things I think about are never the anxiety and the mm. moments of feeling helpless and the moments yeah. of feeling not good enough. Like I only, it's like, I want to go back and do it again. And I'm every race day was a terrifying experience, you know, but, right. but it just was like to just to spend five minutes floating and just kind of like, whew. right. Okay. And I got out and I went back to the tent. They asked me if I wanted some champagne. I said, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, please. Can I have the bottle? So I lied. One last question. <laughs> what did that experience teach you about outside of cycling? What did that experience teach that... you about yourself? I don't know why certain things give me. <laughs> like, <laughs> that I am so much stronger than I thought I was just as a human. Yeah. Getting through those situations and I think kind of pulling yourself up when it's like, the easier thing i had moments in the first year that i was just like i don't i don't know if i can keep mentally doing this to myself like i want this experience like yeah like i already said it was the coolest thing i've ever done it was also the hardest if i could go back knowing how it would end i would do it again a hundred times but what would i do different yeah yeah